In this lesson, we learn about relations and functions, and um, functions are really going to be the foundation of a lot of graphing that you're going to do in future math courses, even all the way up through college, starting with, obviously, eighth grade. Um, and so we're just going to go into the difference between relations and functions, and then we'll actually do some work with them. Ordered pairs can be used to show inputs and outputs. And you see they have an example, the x-coordinate is functioning as the input, and the outputs are being represented by the y-values. A relation is a set of ordered pairs that relates an input to an output. A relation can be represented by ordered pairs or by a mapping diagram. And in example one, they're demonstrating a mapping diagram. This is a design called the mapping diagram where it shows you all the inputs grouped together, which remember are represented by the x values, and all the outputs grouped together, which are represented by the y values. And so they're just telling you if this is your input, that's your output. And so they're matching the inputs with the outputs. And so we just have to list them as ordered pairs. So remember, inputs are x values and outputs are y values. So this first pair right here is the point 1, 3. This point right here is the point 2, 6. And you can do the same thing for the next two. This is the point 3, 9. And this is the point 4, 12. This one might look a little trickier because the arrows are, are crossing each other, but it's really the same thing. You take your input and you match it up with its corresponding output. So this one is the point zero, zero. Then you take your next input, and this one has two outputs, so one of the points is two, one, but another point is going to be two, negative two. So that point is also in this relation. And then the final point is 4, comma, negative 3. Do me a favor and put a nice big star in this section, and I'll explain why when you get to class. What I'd like you to do is the on your own section, so pause the video and try those on your own. The next thing we're going to talk about is this really powerful word called a function, and a function is a relation that pairs each input with exactly one output. That's called a function. And you deal with a lot of functions when you get to upper level math. So I want you to start learning that vocabulary so that way when you hear it in high school, it's not the first time you're hearing it. Let's talk about what a function is. So here's what it means to be a function. And I'm going to demonstrate an example too. When you have a function, that means that no matter what input you pick, you know exactly what output you're going to land at. So, for example, if I tell you that my input is negative 9, you know exactly where to go. There's only one arrow, and so if I say what's the output with negative 9, you should know that it's 0. If I say what's the output with negative 2, there's only one possible arrow, and that brings you to the 5. 5, it's, the output is 10. And 12 shares the same output, but that still makes it a function because no matter what number you plug in, you know exactly which arrow to pick. So letter A is a function. Now, here's what I want you to look at in letter B. I'm going to tell you right at the bat that letter B is not a function. Here's why. So I say, okay, I'm going to plug in negative 2. And you follow, there's only one arrow, so you know you're going to land at 4. And the same thing happens with negative 1. There's only one possible arrow for you to follow. In 0, you see there's two arrows, meaning that you don't know whether I want the output 5 or I want the output 6. You don't know which way to go. And anytime you have that situation where there's an output or an input that goes to more than one output, meaning you don't know which value to go to, then that's what makes it not a function. A function is where you know exactly where to go, and something that's not a function is where you have this situation where you don't really know 
where you're supposed to land. So like I said earlier, letter B is not a function because it has this question mark. In example three, we have to do two things. First, we have to determine whether it is a function, and then we have to figure out the pattern that exists between the inputs and the outputs. So I'll talk about that in a second when we get to it. But first, look at number one. Is number one a function? Is there any question about what your output will be for any given input? And the answer is no. There's no question. Every input goes to only one output. And so this is a function. Let's go through numbers two and three and just determine whether or not they're a function. And then we'll look for the patterns. So is number two a function? Is there any question about where you're supposed to go for a given input? And the answer is yes, there is doubt because I don't know if I say the input is negative one half, you could say two or you could say four and you would be correct. And same thing for one third, you would either say seven or nine and both of those answers are correct. You're only allowed one output for any given input. So this is not a function. And example three looks just like example one. There's only one output for any given input. So it is a function. All right, so now let's go back to number one and let's figure out the pattern that exists between the inputs and the outputs. So here's how you figure that out. You look down the input column and you see what's happening. So the inputs are going up by one. The outputs are increasing by 15. So that's really what the sentence says. As the input goes up by one, the output goes up by 15. Now what's good about number two, for example B, is that when it's not a function, you don't really have to look for a pattern because some of the time there isn't one. So we don't have to write the pattern for example two, but let's write the example three pattern. So let's look at what's happening in the table. The inputs are going up by two, and here they're going down by three in the output column. So that's gonna be our sentence. As the input goes up by two, the output goes down by three. And really what you're doing is you're kind of calculating the slope because if you were to plot these points, they would have a 15 over one slope because your outputs go up by 15 and your inputs go up by one. And remember input is X and output is Y. So this would be uh, 15 over one as a rise over run. And number three would be a negative three over two slope because that would be X and that would be Y. And so your Y value is going down three and your X value is going up two. So that would be a negative three halves slope. So what you're really doing is you're finding the slope when you describe the pattern. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.